Hey, what's going on guys? The Bell Dam is back for a brand new video. And today, I'm going to be giving my book review, my overall thoughts on Paul Tremblay's novel, The Cabin at the End of the World. Now this is just adapted into a film by M. Night Shyamalan, as we all know called Knock at the Cabin. It just literally came out last week. But I wanted to talk strictly about the book and what I thought, like what worked, what didn't. And just for, just for her, just for your curiosity, I did see the movie yesterday. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really, it was well shot. The acting was really good. I did have some I was really conflicted on how the movie kind of ended, but, you know, after really thinking on it, I guess it makes sense in the sense of what they wanted to do, like, in the screenplay. But it was a it was a pretty good movie overall. But here to talk about the book, Cabin at the End of the World. So, if you've seen the movie, or you've at least, know, like, read the synopsis of it, this book follows a same-sex couple who are they're vacationing in a cabin in a lake on a lake with their adopted daughter Wen. And one day this is how the book this is how the book and the movie opens. Wen is out in the front yard catching grasshoppers and naming them and cataloging them. It's really cute. And She's approached by a very large man named Leonard, as well as like three other people called their names uh, Redmond, Sabrina, and Adrian. And what happens is they, uh, they like Leonard is the first one to befriend Wen, and he tells her that her daddies are. Both her and her daddies are going to have to make a very impossible choice. Where one choice is they're going to have to... Basically, one of them is going to have to die in order to stop the uprising apocalypse that is happening. And they force their way into the cabin. And they hold these people hostage until they make a choice. And this book follow, This book is only set in, like, only takes place over a few days, so it's a very short, it's a very brief book, but a lot, but it takes a lot of, like, impact with it. Um, what can I say about it? The characters, you really, I, you get to, you really get to know the characters in the story because they're more, they go into a lot more detail of the characters, particularly like Eric and Andrew, and you get to little you get to know a little bit more about our uh, four intruders as well. But these aren't like despite them despite them like breaking into this cabin and holding this family, these really aren't bad people. It's weird because you're really not supposed to sympathize with them, but they are... They make a case where they believe that they're under the... This assumption that if they can take it, like if... They're under this belief that sacrificing someone will do... Will become the greater good in order to save, like... A number of people on the planet that are dying because of this apocalypse and it's like it's not it's an end of the world scenario they say this in the book as well as in the movie there's going to be and they sh there's going to be like the oceans will rise there's going to be plagues fires um, like planes falling from the sky etc and so it's a very apocalyptic story and when I was reading this like I thought the characters were 
I thought the characters and writing were very interesting and strong. But at the same time, I was kind of on the... Like, when I was really thinking about it after I finished it. And I was talking to a friend about it as well. Because we were both reading it. Because we were both reading it. We were talking, we were discussing it, and I was kind of, like, the way that Leonard and Leonard, Redmond, Sabrina, and Adrian were really in this belief that the world was ending, particularly Leonard. I was kind of on the fence about it, because I was just like... And they actually discussed this in the book as well. They, uh... I think it's Andrew. Andrew is more of the kind of the more the more logical one because Eric is he was under uh Eric grew up a very religious person and this isn't really like a knock against religion. But Andrew was kind of Andrew was kind of the one that was like pulling him back in and just, like, asking him, because there's a lot of talk in this book about, you know, a cult mindset and, like, influencing. And do these people really believe, you know, that they are, uh, you know, that they, uh, do they believe that the actual apocalypse is happening, or can they actually can these people actually be influenced because we've seen it happen before? If enough people actually get you to believe something, it you can in your head, you can actually believe it's actually true, you know? So that's why I was kind of on the fence about whether the apocalypse was happening, but they do show uh they do show these events happening. And there's a character, the characters in the story, like, they die in an order. And every time, like, every time they die, a sacrifice is made. Like, another, another cataclysmic event goes, uh, is set off. And they're getting frustrated because they don't want to die. So they're asking, they're pleading with Eric and Andrew to sacrifice one of their family members so the humanity can be saved. And I just thought it was really, I just thought it was really interesting. And there's a lot, of, there's a lot of action, there's also a lot of action that takes place in this book. There's also a lot of action that takes place in this book and it's mainly just like these it's mainly eric and andrew trying to get away from these people that they believe are some kind of like crusaders of biblical proportions and yeah it's a very like and the way some of these people, like, the way some of these guys go out, it's very, it's, it's written in a very graphic detail. Like, I don't want to spoil what happens to them, but I just want to really recommend you give the book a watch, especially if you've enjoyed the film. I would really recommend the book, but huge, huge trigger warning here. Excuse me. There is a death in this book that will absolutely upset some people. If you've seen the movie and you haven't read the book, this is a big trigger warning. There is a... I don't want to say who it is. But there's a death that will definitely upset you near the end. Because one character that survived in the movie doesn't make it in the book. And it was a very shocking moment. 
that I don't believe the I don't believe Paul Tremblay's intention was to just make it right that for shock value. It was like something that you didn't see coming. And if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to spoil it for those who actually who do want to give this book a read. But it's a very kind of sad and tragic story. But it ends on kind of a it ends on a tragic note, but also kind of a hopeful note. But man, it's just a uh, I really enjoy, I really did enjoy it. And I would definitely pick up more books by Mr. Tremblay. Because I think he's a I think he's a really I think he's really talented. So yeah, I would really recommend you give the book a read if you've seen the movie. And that's just this is just like a little review of it. Really enjoyed it. Don't want to give too much spoilers away. Just read it, please. <laughs> so yeah, this is just my, uh, so thank you guys for watching my review of The Cabin at the End of the World. Definitely will be picking up more books by Paul Tremblay and reviewing them. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. And I'm sorry about, you know, the lighting and all this stuff, but I'm working on what I have. Hopefully it will get better one day. But thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you soon in a new video.